Let's round out the night with some viewer email as well as yeah. a little bit of, well, we don't necessarily have a question, but it is a an update or a continuation of last episode's question. Right, the philosophical. Yeah. yeah. Hello, viewers. If you email us, we will read that email. Yes, we will. Uh, and what what's that email again, Jamie? Do you mean radio at... Or do you want nonprofits? At? Nonprofits at nonprofits at <laughs> atheist hyphen community dot org. Yes. And thank you. <laughs> thank you yes. again to Chuck from Arizona. So it, last last time he, he had his easy proof of, of determinism. Mm -hmm. And we spoke a, about that at length. He emailed us again and he said when I claimed that every posi every proposition is true or false right now. I meant from a propositional logic point of view. I don't think that a proposition can have indeterminate truth value in propositional logic. The truth value can be unknown, but it has to be true or false. Of course, propositional logic is a human invented concept. Its rules aren't, uh, aren't binding on reality. An indeterminate future might be something it can't handle. So, well, so... It, the, and if you want to read in, ter down, in terms of a, a human invent invented proposition, it's, it's a, a set of concepts invented by humans to describe aspects that apply to reality, something yeah. like right. a, a idea or statement being true or false. But I don't think that that touches on um, the, the criticism of his initial position, which I brought up previously, which... V, uh, and, and because I know the, yeah. that the 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 vast number of hours of research on the show that you did prior to <coughs> coming on here uh, didn't actually tend to include last episode, perchance. Um, that sorry, I shouldn't shame you for that. <laughs> I show up on lots of <laughs> shows, having done only a moderate amount of research. Um, it was uh, he was saying that uh, you could demonstrate that the world is deterministic. And I'm paraphrasing here. So go ahead and email us again because I'm probably going to get it wrong. <laughs> um, because you can make a statement now that is either true or false. Okay. Uh, th uh, you can make a statement now that is not determined, right? So-and-so will, I'm trying not to say so-and-so will win an election, right? Joe Bob will win the election for emperor of the universe in the year 2222, right? That isn't true or false right now because it hasn't happened, but it will be right. either true or false in the future. And so because there is a determined value of that statement that I can make now that will occur in the future, you could demonstrate that the uh, universe is deterministic. That's an interesting point. It, it is, but my criticism of it breaks down to that your your statement is a proposition will either be true or false. Therefore, the actual answer to that question is already determined. Does not equate to determinism, right? Because determinism would be it is determined that Joe Bob will win. This is true, no matter what, right? Like that is would be a deterministic universe. Well, wouldn't that be the difference between like hard determinism and soft determinism? So, like, I think less that the argument that Chuck is it Chuck, Chuck? yeah, Chuck. Um, I check uh, that Chuck is making is not necessarily. F I wouldn't. I would not make this argument for hard determinism. I would make it as an example against the idea of libertarian free will. Because that does Elaborate. wreck that concept. So yeah. libertarian free will, um, to my understanding, and I've only taken about two or three courses on whoop, on philosophy, so I could be getting Don't worry, this very wrong. I'll correct you if you're wrong. Okay, so. good, good, good. Um, <laughs> I hope little lady is included in that course. Oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> Shame. Oh, oh that, that cringe. That is, that's gorgeous. Um so a libertarian free will is the idea that you can do anything you want at any time and everything is a possibility. There are no constraints. 
on on you in either uh you know, uh, by a higher power or by your own biology or by future or past events. It's all just basically uh, open world, I guess. Kind of. Your decision making is unbound. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and that is what a lot of people think of when they think of free will. There are varying degrees of free will. There's the free will that uh, we have the ability to be consciously aware of our decisions. But uh, those decisions are impacted by environment, by our biology, by past events. Um, and that's where I think the Sam Harris, Dan Dennett uh, argument is fascinating. Yeah, the, like neurolo neurologically, mm. you, right. we, we can see that your decision happens in your brain before you recognize that it's happening. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so for me, I think that argument works against the idea that anything, absolutely anything, is possible at all times. Um, because the argument there is that, well, no, it's one of two options. And if you are limited in your options, yes or no, true or false, you by definition do not have unlimited options. So you cannot be a proponent of libertarian free will. But I would not say that that by itself was an argument for any kind of hard determinism. Mm. Seems like if, if your idea was that we, there is no multiverse, there is um, only this universe and a parallel universe, and we've only got the two, so it has to be yes or no, mm -hmm. then this would be, um, I would say yes, proof of hard determinism in that we only have one of two options because we only have one of two uh, universes. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'll be honest, I hadn't considered this question uh, in the context of, of multiple universes um, at all. Although, I will say to to your point about there being only either yes or no, I was mostly referring to that in the, um, the uh, uh -huh. logical absolute... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, no, fill the, the dead space. The logical absolute of uh, either a proposition is true or it's not right. in terms of yes mm -hmm. or no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, the, that would place as the constraint on free will of what is logically possible. Right. Um, so I think replacing maybe yes, uh, uh, true or false with A and B, mm -hmm. um, to say that either A or B will happen is still deterministic for somebody who believes that you can choose C or D. You mm. can't. It's only A or B. Like, those are your two choices. It will happen or it won't. And it can't do both at the same time, which I think is what he was talking about in, in this updated one. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, in that, well, here, let me reread the updated one then. Maybe I was mis misunderstanding that. Yeah, he is not, um, Chuck is not necessarily... Uh, elaborating whether or not he's talking about hard deter determinism versus soft determinism, okay. which I, you know, kudos for you at elaborating on that. I think this is more soft determinism. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. But again, we, you know, maybe we're misinterpreting what Chuck is trying to say and absolutely feel free to elaborate further uh, uh, in your next email if you. Okay, if you want so actually. So now, now you definitely have to email us back or, <laughs> I don't know, or doom on you. Um, because the last paragraph, of course, propositional logic is a human invented concept. Its rules aren't binding on reality. And then I elaborated, well, yes, of course, its rules attempt to describe reality. But the point that he was making with that, its rules aren't binding on reality. An indeterminate future might be something it can't handle in the same way. It, I, I look at that in the same way that Newtonian physics can't handle, like, subatomic particles and... Uh, quantum physics because it's these rules work and they describe reality until we get to this part of reality. Right, right. So mm. it's possible that propositional logic breaks down in a future with an indeterminist with an indeterministic future and now you have to email so that uh, Kevin knows I'm right. So. <laughs> <laughs> but also I think my question then would be okay, so how do we know? Be yeah. <laughs> because if, if the argument is we know this works for now, but it could very well not work if we come up against the idea of an indeterminate future. Mm. Then, okay, but we haven't come across that yet. Well, so up until this point, we're still stuck at A and B. Well, I think I think the the point that he's making is that we have propositional logic, and it appears to demonstrate to describe 
aspects of, of whether something is true or false well. And if that is applied to uh, uh, truth values in future, it implies a deterministic universe. So the, the assumption that he's acknowledging is that, okay, well, if propositional logic accurately describes reality, then deterministic right. future, which I'm not saying that I necessarily agree with, but that's not the part of this yeah. uh, debate that we addressed uh, on this episode. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, Chuck, please email back and uh, mm-hmm. let us know if, if you agree, if you think we're off base, and anybody else who has any kind of phil- philosophical question of any kind, please email us. Uh, I would love to talk about it.